From plastic toy-packed chocolates to easy-to-swallow magnets, today we look at things that are banned in America. Number 7. Stinky Cheese Americans love dairy, especially their cheese. In 2015, a study from the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, revealed the average American eats 34 pounds of cheese per year. With a population of more than 325 million people in the country, that's a lot of cheese dairy producers have to provide. But even with such a high demand, there are certain dairy delights that fall short of American standards. European cheeses sometimes use processes that are shunned in the United States. Some of the state's banned cheeses include those which rely on insects to produce. One type called mimolette utilizes cheese mites to add another layer of flavor into the cheese as they burrow through the rounded block. Even worse, the Kuzu Marzu cheese serves as a hatchery for fly larvae that consume the stinking cheese while leaving behind a sugary, fatty, protein-packed excretion that fans of the dank dairy dish find to provide an exquisite flavor. If you found that example stomach-churning, don't worry. These cheeses won't show up at the local grocery anytime soon, as they remain banned from crossing U.S. borders. Number 6. Kinder Eggs with a number of hazards in the public marketplace ranging from faulty electronics or recalled vehicles to unapproved medications, the first entry on this list comes from something a bit more delicious. Made by Italian candy company Ferraro, the Kinder Surprise is a beloved egg-shaped treat across Europe, known for its delicious milk chocolate flavor and plastic toys hidden within. But the collectible plastic trinkets, which prove popular with children and adults alike, have actually been a cause of concern in the United States and have gotten the candy toy hybrid banned. The Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act of 1938 has continuously blocked the Kinder Surprise from reaching the United States since the candy's debut in 1974. The act essentially bans the sale of any confectionery food item with an embedded non-nutrient, inedible object that doesn't serve a function for consumption. In short, the candy served as a potential choking hazard in its classic form. Lucky for Americans, though, in 2017, the Ferrero Company introduced a new item, the Kinder Joy. This updated version of the Kinder Classic was packaged in a way to fully separate half of the egg, made of candy and a creamy pudding, from the half containing a toy. The original chocolate egg surprise might not ever make it to the States, but in the meantime, the Kinder Joy will have to do. Number 5. Unrefrigerated Eggs As shown in the last entry, countries don't always agree with what is and what isn't safe for human consumption. When it comes to eggs and their storage, though, the U.S. and Europe are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. The typical instruction given to egg-eating Americans is to refrigerate them upon purchase and keep them that way. In addition, all eggs are required to have been sanitized and washed before hitting the public marketplace. But these standards would disqualify the yolk-filled food from reaching shelves across the Atlantic, as the Europeans treat eggs a bit differently. Moisture on the surface of an egg can allow for bacterial growth and the spread of pathogens through the porous shell. This fact, combined with the incentive for farmers to produce and sell only natural clean eggs, has given way to the United Kingdom and European Union ruling that all eggs must not be cleaned by the selling parties. In addition, eggs are coated with a substance called the cuticle as their birth from the mother hen, and this serves to naturally protect the eggs from moisture and bacteria. It's believed by the anti-washing proponents that this natural casing can be damaged by the chemical sanitizing and hot water scrubbing employed by the U.S., in fact, this belief has even been upheld by the USDA, but American egg producers have an answer of their own with a colorless, odorless mineral oil used to coat eggs that require long-term storage. This coat isn't necessary for all eggs, as the current process sees eggs delivered to the marketplace from lay within weeks, if not days. Washing eggs isn't the only point of contention with the US and European countries, also at odds over the temperature at which the protein need to be stored. Nations like Britain, France, and Italy mandate the storage of eggs at room temperature, as eggs transferred from chilled to room temperature will build up condensation on the shell, granting an invitation to infection from foreign pathogens. Conversely, Americans are required to store eggs at 45 degrees or lower, as opposed to the British recommendation of 68 degrees or below. A major contributor to the refrigeration of U.S. eggs comes from the prevalence of salmonella in eggs left at room temperature too long. It's thought that eggs will last longer without infection if kept chilled continuously. But this isn't a concern for the British who have vaccinated the majority of domestic chickens, resulting in a drop to 581 cases of salmonella poisoning in 2009 from a whopping 14,771 cases reported only 12 years earlier. 
In comparison, U.S. farmers aren't required to inoculate their henhouses. And perhaps due to this fact, a 2011 report from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention showed more than 1 million Americans fell ill with salmonella a year. Farmers blame the cost to vaccinate as their reason for not doing so. As the FDA estimates a cost of 14 cents per bird and the majority of chicken farms keeping poultry by the thousand. But with each hen producing around 260 eggs across their lifetime, perhaps the vaccination would be worth the investment. Regardless, these nations remain at a stalemate, as the United States continues to ban unrefrigerated eggs and Europe continues to ban the opposite. Number 4. Lead Books Sometimes it takes years for the world to catch up with the side effects of new products. And in the case of old children's books, the realization couldn't come soon enough. In 2008, the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act passed through the U.S. Congress and established limitations on the level of lead allowed within products designed for children under the age of 13. This included products like toys, bikes, playground structures, and books. For some items, this meant strict testing requirements and corrections to their production process. But for others, those changes to the manufacturing procedures had been made decades before. Thus, the issue for these industries was the disposal of products already in existence that violated the new lead limits. Children's books fell under this umbrella. The January following the passing of the CPSI Act, the Consumer Product Safety Commission issued a press release stating that book resellers need not test their products but were responsible for the sale of any books with high lead levels. The statement said that ordinary paperback and hardback books were okay to sell if printed after 1985. However, books prior to that, or containing electronic or other non-ordinary components, posed a serious risk to children's safety. As a result, only the children's books published within the last 33 years or so are legally allowed within the United States. Number 3. Neodymium Balls one item not meant to be ingested anywhere in the world, let alone in the U.S., are buckyballs. Though not technically banned at the moment, this product has had a rough time over the past decade. These small magnetic balls are made of an incredibly powerful naturally magnetic material called neodymium. In 2009, Maxfield and Oberton, makers of the building block-like beads, repurposed them from their original intended use as an office desktop trinket to that of a toy and watched sales skyrocket to 175,000 units sold. Unfortunately for them, proper labels weren't administered for child safety and a recall was issued, but less than 50 buckyball purchases were returned. Instead, Americans saw a rise in magnetic-related hospitalizations in the coming years with children and teenagers accidentally swallowing individual buckyballs. Due to the intense strength of the magnets, new complications arose when more than one ball was consumed. If these magnetic balls are in the vicinity of one another, with nothing but inner body tissue separating them, the damage can prove brutal if not fatal. Initially in 2012, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, or CPSC, sought to outright ban the products and conducted a lawsuit against buckyballs. This essentially ended their production, but a second company that had no record of injury on file pushed the matter to allow for their product, which was similar, if not the same, to buckyballs. This business, Zen Magnets, found the fault to lie with labeling issues and not the product itself. And so, in 2016, the regulatory ban was overturned by the U.S. Court of Appeals, which sided with Zen Magnets. Sale of the small magnetic ball has resumed in recent years, but with the addendum of strict requirements established by the CPSC to ensure the safest transactions possible regarding the product. These guidelines were even requested by Zen Magnus, as the new leader in magnetic ball toys seems to indicate doing things by the book. Still, the CPSC couldn't be too happy, as the overturned ban marked the first loss for the commission in 30 years. Number 2. Haggis Hazards to children's health aren't the only reason to ban products in America. Every year, the USDA evaluates food, drink, and other consumable products, as well as chemical products, on their safety and suitability for use and sale in the States. In 1971, the U.S. determined all animal lung products to be unsafe for consumption, as there was an increased risk in digestive fluids like phlegm or stomach acid entering the organ during slaughter. Used seldomly in some countries, one internationally popular culinary creation relies heavily on the banned meat for traditional production, the national dish of Scotland, haggis. Made from minced sheep's lung, liver, and heart, along with onions, oatmeal, spices, and animal fat, this granular concoction is boiled till ready within a tightly wrapped sheep's stomach. The oatmeal-esque consistency of the meal contains a distinct taste of oval that can come off grainy and spicy, but is loved in its country of origin. 
Haggis remains available throughout Scotland year-round and comes in a variety of brands with lower price selections opting for a synthetic casing over the traditional stomach. Fast food variants across the European country have utilized the meat as well, with items like haggis and chips called haggis supper, haggis pizza, haggis burgers, and even a deep-fried Indian version called haggis pakora. But Scottish Americans remain stuck with the options of visiting Scotland or lungless alternatives within the United States. America is going on 47 years of outlawing the meat with no signs of this exotic dish coming west in the future. Number 1. True Absinthe The mythical liquor known as absinthe has gone in and out of style over the past couple of centuries due to its rumored hallucinogenic side effects and high alcohol content. But the jade green drink has had its fair share of bannings, both in the United States as well as abroad. Using wormwood oil as a main ingredient, absinthe typically contains a toxic chemical called thujan. This element has led to the drink being banned abroad, but the stigma surrounding the alcohol comes more from its history as the go-to drink for drunken debauchery. In the US, the sale of absinthe has been renewed since 2007, but in a slightly watered-down capacity. Sporting a limit of only 10 mg of thujan per liter, American absinthe falls short of the 35 mg per liter norm of its European cousin. Still, the drink has long since been proven not to grant hallucinations and simply serves as a high-content grain alcohol, thus making the ban of true absinthe from the United States less drastic a loss, with American-made drinks like the 190-proof Everclear readily available. 